comparative evaluation of non-refractive screeners iSwift, PDI Check, and Blink. We will look at the Blink Virofringent Screener, PDI Check, Auto Stereoscopic Screener, and the Eye Tracking with iSwift. We will gauge these against recent 2021 uh, validation guidelines, including uh, APOS and the one described by David Hunter. All right, now let's see how you do. Press check mark. Nailed it. Now, with this fancy pair of goggles that were. Awesome. This is stereo. We're looking for the one with a box. Nice job. Nice. Okay, so let's pick the different color. Just on its side, press that square. Oh, good. You almost did it. Try it again. Let's try that one more time. Nice job! All right. You did that great. All done. Great job. Now, what Tina is going to get a special thing for you. Just a little smiley face. You passed. Okay. Jack o' lantern in there. You're doing great. Keep looking. Keep looking. Perfect. Nice job. Prefer left. Great. So let's check first those that can uh, assess visual acuity and stereo. Looking at visual acuity, the standard deviation of the difference of iSwift was slightly smaller than that for dynamic acuity testing with PDI check. This is also true for the inner eye difference. As far as stereo is concerned, Randot on iSwift and dynamic discs on PDI check had fairly similar standard deviation of the difference. Checking iSwift, PDI check, and Blink compared to refractive APOS risk factors yields this ROC curve. For amblyopia and strabismus, this curve. And for all components, refractive, strabismic, and visual acuity, this curve. This compares to Hunter's uh, new rubric for uh, referral warranted uh, conditions. Looking at screening time with iSwift, PDI check, Blink was by far the fastest.